Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Like this or like that, ten days have passed. One third of the month is finished. Seems like we just entered yesterday. This is one of the signs of the Ahir Zaman, where time is going to move very quickly. <coughs> First ten days, Holy Prophet والسلام, is recommending to make the zikr. Oh, what? Zikr? So many people oppose the zikr. Suddenly everyone is making zikr in the month of Ramadan. What is that zikr? Ya Arhamar Rahimin Arhamna. Ya Arhamar Rahimin Arhamna. Ya Arhamar Rahimin Arhamna. As many times as you can. Oh, the most merciful, the most compassionate, have compassion on you. Have mercy. This is the zikr that the nation is supposed to You must sit down and think why are we asking for mercy from Allah? <coughs> is Allah punishing us? Is punishing us? <coughs> it's not punishing us. Right now, it's not punishing us. We're punishing ourselves. It's not punishing us yet. Don't think that Allah is. Let me give you one example. 124,000 prophets, they came. Their nations commit one mistake. And the whole nation is wiped out. Wiped out. There's one nation. Now the mistake they did, they did everything correctly. But one mistake that they do, they play around with weights. Meaning, they play around with business. They cheat. Because of that, <laughs> Allah punished the whole nation. Can we count the things that this nation of the Ahir Zaman, from the Prophet of the last days, can we count how many wrong things that we are doing? It's countless. It seems as if Everything that earlier nations that they have done, we are doing right now. We are witnessing, we are watching, it's common. Is Allah still touching us? We still have air to breathe. The sun is still shining. We just had food. Oh, how about those people? In so many countries, they are in very, very bad, terrible conditions. Allah is not punishing them. We are punishing them. We are the ones that give them money to buy the bombs for the bombs to be raining down on them. How about those people who are starving and they don't have food? There is food. We are the ones to keep this economic system to be according to our liking that we'd rather throw away tons of food into the ocean than to give it for poor people to eat, because if you do that, you're going to bring the price down. <coughs> so what other things? Sicknesses? Sicknesses as coming to this nation, Allah is saying every sickness there is, there is also a cure. We think they don't know the cures to the sicknesses, yeah, they do. So what we have done, listen carefully, the reason for all of this is not to say, look, we are good, they are bad. No. It is not to say, we are saved, they are. No, it is not. The reason for all of this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the titles of the Holy Prophet is, he is the one who witnessed. He witnessed. Witnessing that in his time, during the time like this, like Ramazan, what did he used to do? What did he used to do? He retreat into the cave. He used to worship. And he used to think, what are the problems of the people that are around him? Why the problems are there? And what are the solutions? The Fakur, he was So the reason for us to know all of this, it is to witness. Once we know 
then we're going to, as believers, slowly pull ourselves back. Pull ourselves back. I cannot pull myself back. Let me come. Because if I may reach to you. I want to, but I cannot. That's okay. You have the intention. The way is going to be open for you. Uh, I don't care. That's what the people of Jan Jannat, they say? No. The people of Jannat, they say, I care. The people of Jahannam, they say, I don't care. Then you're going to be with those ones who say those words too. You're going to witness. And you're going to say, I'm weak one, Ya Rabbi. Trying to keep my faith. Ya Arhamar Rahimi. Arhamar. Now, when you ask for that mercy and that compassion, that in the middle of this fire that we have made for each other, Allah sends the compassion and the mercy. That wherever you are, in the middle of that fire, you're going to find some peace. You're going to find reason and meaning and you're going to hold on to the hope of Allah. Your hope and reason and meaning, it is not according to what your friends say. This life, if you have, you're going to have hope and meaning. The possessions that you have is going to give you hope and meaning. The titles that you have is going to give you hope and meaning. It is not that completely, especially these times at this end. And that time, you can live in the middle of the fire. And you're going to have hope. You're going to have meaning. You're going to have peace. You're not happy with what is going on. And you're asking Allah to send help. You're starting to feel like the Prophet You start to feel like how the Awliya Allah did. You start to feel how the believers should be. Because the believers, they feel. The believers, they are one body. When one part is hurting, the whole body is hurting. So we are made to witness to this. And we must witness. Because Allah will ask us, the day of judgment, that time, that year, that Ramazan, when all these things were happening, where was your mind? Where was your heart? What were you wishing? What were you asking for in the du'as that whole night long you are making prayers? What is it for? What is it for? Track yourself. You're making prayer. What is it for? You're not going to go very far. But you'll know most of it is for myself. Most of it, it is to make my life better. Most of it, it is for me, my family, maybe some friends. But I stop looking at the Ummah the way that the Prophet is looking, the way that the believers are looking. I stop feeling, I stop caring. So when I ask for Ya Arhamar Rahimin Arhamna, I'm asking it only for myself. You become completely cut off from your Prophet in that time. We're understanding a little bit. Especially in these days, we need to say, Ya Arhamar Rahimin Arhamna. First 10 days, second 10 days, Ya Arhamar Rahimin. Anybody knows? You? Luqman, you should know this. Fafwan. These things they teach very heavy. Fafwan. Forgive me. Why are we asking for compassion? Why are we asking for forgiveness? If we don't know what is it that we've done wrong. You can only improve yourself. You can only have real cleanliness if you know what is it. Where is it that is dirty? This is why we're in Tarika. To understand exactly where is dirty and how to clean and where we're going to ask from for that cleanliness to happen. 
in traditional Ahli Sunnah societies, countries, days and the nights of Ramadan, they are rushing also to go to Dergahs, to go to Makams. They go like in Turkey right now, they would go to certain other places where, for example, the Ottoman Sultans, they built one masjid just to house the Khirkai Sharif, the holy the Jubba of the Holy Prophet that <coughs> it is open now during the month of Ramadan for people to make ziyarat, to go and to pay their respects because it is connected to the Prophet If the Prophet can touch dead hearts and make that dead hearts to have life, you think he cannot make everything around him to have life, but we are not seeing that life. In these eyes we cannot judge. Like Shah Hadi used to say, we know the reality that is in the Rauzai Sharif. He says, just to see, we go to lick the stones and the walls and the tomb of the Prophet to get the blessings. So if we are not understanding, oh, it's dirty here. Okay, what kind of a dirty is it? This one is ketchup. So it needs this kind of cleaner, it needs this kind. This one is coffee. It needs it. If we are not understanding that you cannot do a good job of cleaning. Ya Rahma Rahimin Arhamna, Ya Rahma Rahimin Fa'wanna. Have mercy, have forgiveness for me. If you don't know what you're asking to forgive. The last third of Ramadan is what? Freedom from hellfire. Freedom from hellfire. We made a hell to ourselves. The fire is here right now. If you don't understand what you're asking for forgiveness and how to clean it, then you will not be free from it. That piece of uh, clothes that you're wearing, it may be clean. You can clean it, but it will happen again. You clean it, it will happen again. You are not free from making it dirty. Freedom from hellfire for people of Tariqat for people of Tasawuf is not free from that physical hell fire that is there. It is free from the fire that we make inside of us. Freedom from our own ego that makes that fire. That is it. Because for that, to escape from that fire, it's so easy. But to escape from this fire, it's not so easy. To understand that this is the fire that causes the dirtiness. This is what the month of Ramadan which one of the meanings of Ramazan is what? To burn. <coughs> to burn. What happens when things get burned? Huh? This one. Uh, nowadays we have self-cleaning oven. What is self-cleaning oven? You just turn it up. Right? And what happens? Everything burns inside and it becomes clean. There are certain things in your body that you cannot be removed unless you put that laser there that kills it, that burns it. The fire is there for a reason. The fire of the Ramazan. It is to put out the hell fire that is inside of us. Do we know what we're burning? If not, then it becomes just like that. You're just repeating things. You're just going up and down, praying whole night long. But for what? For what? Year after year, for what? Because your heart is somewhere else. It is not busy with how I, how I got this dirty in the first place. Because I'm so lazy, I'm eating like this and like that and everything is falling. I should stop that. You're not understanding. You're not looking with the eyes of the Prophet And the Sahaba Kiram and the Awliyaullah. So now what is going to happen to the whole Ummah is going to repeat the things over and over again. For years, for generations, for centuries, it's going to get worse. Because there's no reminder. There's no reminder for the real meaning of Ramazan. There is a reminder for the Ramazan. Oh, you don't eat, you don't drink, you don't do other things. When sun comes down, you're going to jump into the food. It's all about family, it's all about eating, it's all about enjoying, it's all about watching TV, all the way up till the Hajjul time. Then it becomes that, the form. There is no meaning. When there is no meaning, the form is not too good to When there is no meaning, you think the children that we're going to raise, they're going to stay in this way? They're not, because there's no meaning. 
especially children nowadays, they're not going to do anything that just because you say you have to do it's your tradition. They're going to say, why? You cannot explain why, because it's tradition, because you don't know why. They are reminders. And the reminders for Ramadan has to come from the people who understand what are the meaning, the secrets of Ramadan. Otherwise, year after year, it's going to be the same. It is not the same. It is different. Last Ramadan is different, but this Ramadan is different. We have to watch ourselves. We have to see how it was. How much has changed? Where were we? We're asking Allah to make us to become that religion. We're asking Allah to forgive us, to have more mercy on us. We're asking Allah not to show His anger or His justice. We're asking Allah for His mercy. We're asking Allah, inshallah, to lift all this oppression that is on this nation and to remove all the wrong ones and to bring the right ones. May Allah forgive me and bless you. May Allah make the next few weeks of Ramadan to be more meaningful, more beneficial, more awake, more understanding to come to us, more intelligence to come to us, more thankfulness to come to us, to have more of the taste of Ramadan. May Allah forgive me and bless you, Al-Fatih.